Dan Kwan. Make some noise for your host, Dan, everybody. Ah, oh, my Brazilian brother. Ah, oh, this is amazing. I love performing out here. Some tiny things about myself. Uh, I come from a Chinese immigrant family. Anybody else? In therapy? No? Just me? Cool. Cool. Yeah, I come from an immigrant family. Uh, I think one of the weirdest things about being an immigrant family is that we will never let that shit go. That, that will follow us wherever we go. Like, my mom, she told me she gave me a Chinese middle name. And she told me, she was like, I gave you that middle name so you wouldn't forget where you're from. And I was like, cool, what does it mean? And she said, it means Chinese guy. And I, I was like, did you give me that middle name or did the government give me that middle name? I think I'm doing the story. <laughs> uh, I'll get this out of the way especially. I also, I'm not actually from the Bay Area. I'm from the East Coast. I'm from a town called Boston. Anybody else? Woo! All right, cool. My fellow racist, hell yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, it's, a, it's a tough time growing up in Boston, right? Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but Boston's a very Irish Catholic town. Uh, I grew up as like one of the only Chinese kids there. Usually when I tell people in the Bay Area I'm from Boston, they come up to me and they tell me, but Dan, you don't look or sound like an alcoholic. Like, are you sure? And I always hate that, just cause that like my family's Asian, like they don't believe that we're from Boston. <laughs> like, like my dad is like, is equally like just as Boston. He immigrated here 30 years ago and I think he's just as Boston as anybody else. Like, he loves the Red Sox, he loves Dunkin' Donuts, and he also did a hate crime, so like. <laughs> I think he makes the cut, all right? I was, uh, I was one of the few Chinese kids in my, in my high school. Uh, it was really hard growing up because like, I had to figure out different ways to fit in. And uh, guys, I tried, to, I tried to do a lot of white things to try to fit in with my friends, uh, but they always saw me through. And guys, I did everything I could and they wouldn't take me. Like, I tried wearing my cap backwards. I tried going to tailgates. I even dated Asian women. Like, I did. <laughs> I did that joke in San Jose and that really hits there for some reason. Like, I don't... There's just something about there, you know? Yeah. I was, uh, it, it's kind of crazy because like, I, I tell people I'm from Boston and the problem is that I actually really did like growing up there. Like, I still have a lot of fond memories. People come up to me and they'll be like, but Dan, Boston's so racist. How'd you grow up there? And I get tired of trying to back it up because I try to tell them, look, Boston's not that racist. Like, I remember one time I was in the playground, right? And I was where I was trying to play, and this one white kid came up to me, I thought he was gonna jump me. And he came up to me and he just said, listen kid, I don't give a fuck if you're black, you're Mexican, or you're queer. I wanna play with you and be your friend. So let's go to your ma's house and we'll go have some dog, all right? And I was like, Oh, these guys aren't racist. They're just fucking stupid, okay? Like, come on, Jimmy. Let's go to my mom's house and eat dog, all right? Like, that's... I was a popular kid. What can I say, you know? I, uh, I mentioned I came from an immigrant family. Uh, my dad's actually a workaholic. Anybody come from have a workaholic dad? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. I think it's pretty normal for an immigrant dad to be a workaholic. Like, my dad, he spent the last 30 years, like, working his entire life. And the biggest thing that happened in our family is that he actually just retired uh, last year. And so, yeah, yeah, no, it, it's, a big, it's a big thing in the family. But I think it's weird for immigrant dads to retire because I never knew he had an actual life. Like, <laughs> like it's kind of crazy. Like, I always wondered, this man spent the last 30 years. He had no fucking hobbies. What's he going to do when he retires? And then the other day he called me, he's like, son, I think I found my calling. I was like, what is that, dad? And he's like, I found Uber. And I was like, Uber? Uber? And the problem is, is not trying to convince your 65 year old dad to not do Uber, is that he still doesn't know how to use his phone. 
So you gotta be in the car while he tries to do Uber? You guys ever call Uber been picked up in an old Toyota Corolla with two Asian people complaining to each other? Just doesn't work out, you know? Yeah, one time we were driving and we picked up this white lady named Janice. We were trying to take her to the airport. She paused for a second. She was like, wait a minute. I didn't call a shared. And I looked at her and I was like, hey, it's take your kid to work day. Shut up, bitch, and get in the car, all right? Like, that's... Don't be judging. Uh, this has been a big year for me, especially. You guys having a good 2024 so far? Yeah? Hell yeah, I love that. I love the positivity. I've been having a big, big, big year of growth, actually. Like, this, like, the last couple of months, I spent the last couple of months trying to grow out my hair because I wanted to be sexier. Uh, okay, that's not the joke, all right? That's very... It's very rude. Uh, but hear me out, guys. Look, it, I think it worked out too well. Because the problem is, is that when my white friends all grow out their hair, they all look like gods of thunder. Like Thor. But then when I grow out my hair, especially from behind, I just look like an Asian woman. Like, this is... And I only started noticing this after I started getting catcalled on Market Street the other day. Like... And... Look, guys, I'm gonna tell you something. It, took me a, it taught me a lot of empathy. Like, ladies, you know what? You guys should never be catcalled on the street. It's very humiliating, you know? It's very, very humiliating. I get it now. Because one time I was on Market Street, this homeless guy started catcalling me. He was like, mm, let me see that face, sweetie. And then I turned around and he was like, oh, shit. I didn't mean to haul out a lesbian. And I was like, all right, I've been Dan Guan. You guys have been dope. Make some noise for Dan, everybody. Dan Guan, give it up for Dan.